afternoon. Let's see if I can uh, answer any questions out there. While I'm doing some other work. Let's see who pops up. I just uploaded a couple of uh, shorts. Um, one on uh, the government shutdown. And what will happen during a government shutdown? Well, um, as you know, I ran the third busiest office in the country, Social Security Administration office, and uh, I've uh, I've done my share of shutdowns. Basically, uh, Social Security employees uh, are essential workers, essential staff. Um, people need their checks. So, when there's a government shutdown, um, yeah. Uh, you can still get your checks and all that kind of stuff. As I mentioned in the, uh, the little thing, only basically two things happen. Is that uh, you can't get a Social Security, re uh, Social Security card replacement because that's not considered essential services. So what we usually do have that, you know, staff work on other workloads. And then uh, uh, sometimes people need a work history for job interview for like uh, police or something like that. You can't give that. So it's not essential. So, but giving out checks and changing addresses and getting people signed up for Medicare and filing, you know, retirement and survivor and disability claims and all that kind of stuff. That's essential services. So all of it uh, continues on. So uh, don't worry about your check. Um, just worry about those crazy politicians uh, playing their games. So there's that. And then also did a uh, quick little short there. Uh, just uploaded a short on uh, uh i guess there's a kellogg's boycott and because of some of the the stupid remarks the guy said yeah if you don't have money just uh, eat cereal for dinner you and your family that's uh yeah that's a sweet comments guy you know makes millions of dollars a year probably has a you know million dollar golden parachute um millions of dollars uh, but uh yeah so it's all Fine and dandy to boycott, be outraged and stuff, but actually, it's uh, it's even better to actually do something. So, again, for you new to the channel, I just uploaded a series of four videos um, with over 40 different programs: government programs, federal, state, local, private programs, uh, discounts, tricks of the trade, based on my decades of working in the uh, inside of the bureaucratic beast. Um, so, make sure you subscribe and go to my channel and i just put up a, a survivor benefits uh, part one i'm working on editing the other parts today so i'll probably have that up in uh, a day or so and then i'm going to upload the spousal benefits um, video probably uh, next week and then i'm working on a, a long series on disability on uh, how to get it how to get your claim approved what you need to know once you have it, you know, um, so all the rest of it. All right, first one, Denise. Hi, Ed, I heard someone talk about the spousal benefit, 50% of PIA at FRA would be reduced 1% each year starting 20s. So if someone turns 60, they would only get a max of 49%. Um, I haven't seen that. One of the things, uh, yeah, um, I haven't seen whether that's actually going to take effect. There's all kinds of people that pass, you know, or, or uh, introduce legislation, um, and uh, you know, you know, to give everybody, you know, free money and you know, chocolate for life and ice cream for life or whatever. And uh, usually, it's just some small little politician somewhere trying to get more votes, and so they appeal to people and try to say, you know, we're going to give you all this kind of crazy stuff or whatever. And then, you know, it, it doesn't happen until it happens. But all these people get, uh, you know, clicks on their YouTube channel when they do that, you know, the sensationalist, you know, thumbnails and, you know, the, you know, free money coming soon, you know, click this button. And yeah, so, but yeah, 50%. So, uh, uh, so the PIA for those people that are not as, uh, uh, um, well read as Denise, the PIA is your primary insurance amount and FRA is your full retirement age. So if you're 67 years old, um, that, uh, yeah, um, your pri the primary insurance amount of the number holder, as we used to say internally in Social Security, the actual worker that you're collecting benefits on, the spouse. Um, so, yeah, I haven't, uh, um, 
you have to find out uh, what's going on with that. This is, is actually the second time I've heard that. I've been hearing, you know, strange stuff like that uh, for decades, and usually just uh, you know, sometimes it takes effect, sometimes it doesn't. Um, max of 49, yeah. If I retire at 62 and get my reduced, can I switch to get half my husband's at 67? Um, so yeah, so you would be able to get up to half. So if he hasn't, so to be his 50, up to 50% of his primary insurance amount. So if he is not, uh, he hasn't filed or something like that, then uh, yeah, that's a, that's always a good strategy. Um, you know, again, you have to stay under your annual earnings limit, which is this year is what, 22,320. Um, but if you're not working, not working over that and nothing will be withheld, that's always a, you know, good strategy. Um, I'm always hesitant to say that because, you know, it's like, oh, you told me to do it, but then I've got taxes and because I've got this other income and now the taxes increase. And so make sure you, you know, think about all that other stuff, but just as just in, in just in terms of social security alone. Yeah, that's a good strategy. Go ahead and get your money. Um, uh, because if you get, um, you know, $300, say $300 on yours and half of his is 500, it, so he's a thousand and half is 500, then you'll get an extra 200 on his. So if you, you know, take it way, way early and you're getting 200, then you'll get 300 on his. So it'll go up to, up, up to half. Um, yeah. And then, so if he decides to wait after his full retirement age, one thing that uh, a lot of people don't realize, and I think it's on my, the, the, the second version of part two of my survivor benefits video that I'm uploading this week, it's uh, a lot of people don't realize that uh, a spouse does and does not receive delayed retirement credits. They, re they do not receive it while the number holder, the worker is alive but uh, as a surviving spouse, you do receive delayed retirement credits. So I think pretty much every YouTuber out there gets that wrong and they're giving out wrong information and partial information and inaccurate information. So, but that's why you all come to my channel because you get the correct stuff and my stupid sense of humor. But other than that, um, I'm going to start widow's benefits this year. Can I switch to my benefits on my full retirement? Yep, absolutely. Another good strategy. All right, y'all locked on today. I like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, some people say, well, my, my benefits on my own are pretty much the same or a little bit more. And But, you know, if you wait till your full retirement age to get your own or if your widow's benefits is, an, is enough to keep you going, then don't collect benefits on your own, wait till it, you're 70, because it increases by 8% every year you wait. Um, so yeah, yep, very good. Uh, all right, y'all locked on today, I like it. Um, do you have a month limit of how much you make if you still work and get your social security pension? I'm only 64. It's, uh, um, it, it only goes by the monthly limit. Um, so you're on uh, social security, just regular social security retirement, sounds like. Um, so yeah, if you're on Social Security retirement, then there's it's um, only the first year there's a monthly limit. After that, it's a yearly annual earnings limit, and that uh, again, that's a little over twenty-two thousand dollars this year. The year you return your full retirement age, it goes up to over fifty-nine thousand dollars, and then once you hit your full retirement age, you can make you know a billion dollars a month and. Uh, it doesn't uh, doesn't affect anything. If you're making, if you're talking about that money, make sure you click the little super chat down there and buy me a buy me a coffee or a beer. It's, uh, I only need one. It's, even in the Marine Corps, they called me one beer weir. I'm a, I'm a cheap date. I'm so I'm such a lightweight. So anyway, does a pension count towards what guy I can make? Nope, pension does not count at all. Because um, you know, again, Social Security is uh, you know supposedly the uh, you know the the, the three legs of the stool you got social security you got pensions which you know pretty much you know a lot of most people don't have pensions anymore they have to you know save do their own savings and then you have your own savings so social security pensions and savings um so social security always wants you to have all three of those i wish more people did but uh you know the economy and 
Kellogg's telling to eat cereal for dinner. Uh, but uh, yeah, anyway. But uh, super long story short, no, a pension does not uh, count um, in terms of the annual earnings limit because it's not work. So I did a I did a short little video on that. Uh, people ask me about gambling. They you know want to scratch off or you know slot machine or something. One you know four or five six thousand dollars, and I say, oh no, now I'm going to go over my uh, my Social Security, and you know, Social Security is going to you know you know make me pay back you know my Social Security benefits. No, no, no. Um, if you're a professional gambler and that's your job, then yes. But if you just win it, you know, win the lottery or you know, cash out a pension or whatever the case may be, it's not considered a work. So you're good. If you go over it, so if you're a thousand dollars, so if you're 64 years old, 63 years old, and you go over a thousand dollars, for instance, they hold back one dollar for every two dollars you go over. Um, and how they know you go over? Well, they won't know until the following year. So if it looks like you're going to go over, like if you're going to go over, you know, twenty thousand dollars, that means you're going to owe you're going to owe Social Security ten thousand dollars. And what they usually do, if you uh, you know tell them that, say, hey, I'm going to go over twenty thousand dollars, you know, this year, what they'll do is they'll withhold checks. They'll hold ten thousand dollars worth of checks. So if you get, let's say, make it easy. If you get a thousand dollars a month, they will withhold the first ten months of checks, and then they'll release November and December. So, but if you know, it, if if you're just going to go over a little bit, um, you know, a few hundred dollars or you know whatever, um, you can just kind of let it ride, and then next year, when your employer or whatever you file your taxes the irs uh, gets that the irs notifies social security and social security you know computer system looks and says oh this person made five hundred dollars then they send you a nice little letter that says pay us our money um and then at that time you just you know you knew it was coming so you just go ahead and you know pay it but if at that time it turns out you can't pay it then you can ask for a um a, a waiver or a payment plan and guess what? I do have a video on that too. So make sure you go into my website, uh, MyGovExpert, and create a playlist. Um, the reason I did the whole playlist thing is because, you know, people ask me a whole bunch of questions, and you know, 90% of the time recently I've been saying, "Oh, I've got a video that details more on that." Then so check out my video and check it. I've just got so many videos that it's hard to navigate. So that's why I built this website and created a playlist. Um, but all the videos I'm updating. I'm working on. I just did um, How to Live on Social Security Alone. That's four part series. My survivor benefits is gonna be a two, at least a two part series. The spousal one is gonna be a couple of parts. The disability is gonna be about three or four videos. I'm gonna do one on retirement, early retirement, regular retirement, um, delayed retirement. That'll be two or three videos. And then I do one on Medicare. That'll be probably like three or four videos. So I'm uh, just pumping away. Um, thank you. You're welcome. That is the same for early retirement page. I just started taking my Social Security payments in February. Um, that is the same. Let me see what the same is. Let me see what your previous question was. Da, da, da. Um, early retirement pay. Um, I, I guess you're talking, uh, Thomas, about, uh, yeah, about, yeah, early, yeah, uh, annual earnings limit. All right, Rita. Um, I for for retirement age is 2025, so I can't work full time without earning limit penalty in 2026. So the year you turn your full retirement age, you can earn up to 59,000 and some change, and one dollar for every three dollars over. So 59,000. Basically, if your full retirement age, what you say your full retirement age is, fe okay, fe so yeah, so you can earn fifty-nine thousand dollars, and well, it'll be no more next year. So you'll probably be able to earn like sixty, sixty-one, sixty-two thousand dollars in January, and then starting February, you can earn you know a billion dollars. And again, buy me a beer if you're looking at that kind of money. Even if you're not, I appreciate coffee or something. Give me a coffee RV. I'm definitely going to be to the playlist I've written down. Okay, awesome, great, thank you. Ah, I love your videos, very informative. All right, good deal, appreciate it. Uh, niche question, all right, I like a niche question. But do you have the percent number of survivor gets if they start surviving as early as 60 years old? Thank you. Um, 
God, I just did the, uh, was it the percentage is, uh, it's at, at 62 and a half, it's 82.5%. So you're looking, uh, oh gosh, I just, uh, it's, I'm, I've got that on the, uh, the video I just did on survivor benefits. Um, but you know, it's uh, for retirement benefits are your own. It's a 30% reduction at 62. Um, as I always recommend, instead of doing the long division on yourself because you don't know what your PIA and you don't know what you know, a lot of times you don't know what that person's PIA is. In order to make an informed decision, as I mentioned in most all my videos, um, you know, call Social Security, um, set up an appointment, a phone appointment, and then have them take a claim for your survivor benefits and tell them, okay, I want to start at 60. And they will give you the numbers. And then then you ask them, says, okay, well, what if I wait a year? And they'll go into the, the computer systems called MCS. They'll go into MCS and they'll change it from January 25 to January 2026 and it takes them two seconds. And they'll tell you, okay, for January 20th, if you wait a year, it'll be this much. And you'll say, okay, let's do it one more time. What if I wait the next year, the following year? And they'll be able to tell you exactly so you have the definitive numbers rather than doing the long division yourself. Um, so, and, and, and at that time, and if you decide, oh, okay, let's go ahead and start now, then you just tell them, okay, let's go ahead and start now. But if you say, oh, okay, I'll, I'll, I'm going to wait for a year. I'll talk to you later. Um, that employee will be very, very happy. You're not wasting that person's time. They will be very, very happy um, because that means they can just close up that and now they have five minutes of a break before their next 50 appointments. So yeah, that person will be very happy for you to say, let me think about it. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Just, just get it done. Um, I want to collect my own Social Security benefits at age 62 in the month of January 20. I turned 62 and I thought I would declare an earning something for 23, but I was going to. Yeah, so if, uh, yeah, you have to be 62 the entire month. So, yep, you're right. January, you can collect and your January check will come in February. Earn it all the first five months, then quit my job. Are you saying I can't even more than, more? okay, so let me see. Were you the one? Okay, yeah, so early retirement. So yeah, you can earn, um, so it's next year. So let's say next year, the earnings limit for the year is $24,000. So um, yeah, if you start your benefits in uh, January and you make $24,000 in January and then you no longer work the rest of the year, you're good. So yeah, as long as you stay under the annual, then you're good. If you go over the annual, um, this doesn't apply to you because you're, you, you know, you're going to you're going to start your benefits in January. But if people go over the annual, then it can switch to a monthly. Um, you know, it doesn't matter how much it was before, but yeah. So it's all very. I don't know why they make it so complicated. So, uh, what is your opinion about people? Oh, there's more to that sentence. <laughs> Saying that social security be reduced in the future. <laughs> opinion about people in general. Um, yeah, it's, I, I, I talked about this a few times in some of my videos about, uh, um, you know, it's, you know, there's, uh, you know, it, it's so, something has to get done and I don't think, um, you know, extending the, the, the retirement age, you know, that's easy for politicians that, you know, have easy cushy, you know, like, I guess I have an easy cushy desk job, but someone like, you know, my father who drove a, an 18 wheeler and my mother was a, you know, worked at a, a, at a diner as a waitress. You know, you know, they can't work past 67 years old. Um, so I, I think that's a terrible one. What my personal opinion is, is the whole doom and gloom about Social Security. My personal opinion is it's based, you know, it's, it's the Wall Street, uh, you know, billionaires and private equity firms and their rich friends in Wall in, uh, in, in Washington, the politicians, they want that money. So what they're doing is they're playing the long game. They are, you know, kind of putting it in our minds that who, who cares, especially young people, who cares? It doesn't, it's not going to be there anyway. So give it to Wall Street so they can take their, you know, crazy commissions and gamble with our money. And, and if uh, they win, if they win, if they lose, then guess what? We lose. So that there's my two cents. My wife and I are both waiting for fraud ages filing online the easiest way if they require it. Can I take those to the local office? Yep, yep. 
Absolutely. Yep. File online. It's always the easiest way. If you need any type of documentation, usually not. Uh, um, a few years ago, they changed it where uh, if you were born in the United States and uh, your Social Security, um, on your Social Security card, you know, it just has your, your name and your Social Security number. But internally, it also has where you're born, your parents' names, your date of birth and all that. Um, as long as that is good and then you don't even need a don't even need a birth certificate and so it might not even need a, a marriage certificate or anything like that they might just take a statement oh thank you i appreciate it someone uh someone bought me sent me a beer a little bit too early for beer but a coffee i appreciate it thank you um so yeah and and if you happen to need any documentation the person that is adjudicating your claim will um call you up and say hey we need your marriage certificate or whatever the case may be and uh, they'll tell you what to send it you have to send them the uh, the original copy um yeah um, and then they'll return it or you can take it down to the office they'll make a copy of it and then they'll return it to you you can't make a copy and give them a copy it has to, they have to see the original i am divorced from a federal employee he made six figure income he left started a business in 19 and failed can i get five minutes he was retired in 1985 by the Department of Energy. Um, yeah, in, uh, um, it, it depends whether he paid into Social Security or not. You know, some of the older federal employees, um, you know, paid into another system, uh, but now everybody pays into Social Security, you know, politicians and everybody for the last you know, couple of decades. Um, so I would definitely... Um, I would definitely try. As I always say in all my videos, call up Social Security, set up an appointment, and they will look. And uh, if you don't have his Social Security number, you don't remember his Social Security number, no problem. Don't worry about it. Um, you just call Social Security and you give him the person's name, the date of birth as close as you know, um, where they were born as best as you can, and they'll be able to find his Social Security number. I've done it hundreds of mil millions and millions of times. So it's very easy. Okay, for expats, better to apply online or in person in Manila or apply in person. Um, yeah, you can do either way. Online is fine. Go to the Manila office. Uh, I think Jason might still be the uh, the boss there. He was uh, he was the guy in uh, uh, Asia that did all of Asia. The Manila office does all of Asia, China, Japan, Philippines, Australia, and stuff. And I think maybe Jason is still the the guy in charge there. But uh, yep, yep, either way is fine. I have a family member on disability. Are they looking into reviewing, getting people into the workforce more? She is in her 50s and trying to work for the first time. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, um, yeah, you know, Social Security, you know, it's for the good of people. You know, it's always, you know, they make more money. Hopefully, if they work, you know, it's better. They get out of the house and, you know, interact with people and all that stuff. But uh, if, if the person's able to. Um, and it saves the trust fund, you know, disability trust fund and everything. So, <clears throat> so that's why they set up a, a, a bunch of programs to help people um, get back to work. So one of those is called the trial work period. So basically for the first nine months, if she wants to get back to work, just tell her to, number one is I would, I would you know, go down to the store and buy a, you know, 99% notebook, 99 cent notebook and write down everything and when she started to work you know t you know tell her to call social security and say um hey i'm gonna go back to work um i just want to make sure you know i still have my trial work period and the trial work period is again that nine months where you can trial work period where you can make you know a million bucks a month um and then after nine months you make that decision so well i wow this is good i can i can do this and then you just call up Social Security and, you know, pretty much stop your benefits. Or if it turns out you can't, then no harm, no foul. At least you tried. And then once you do that trial work period, then there's another called the extended period of eligibility. It's another 36 months. Uh, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be doing a long series on disability. It's going to be about three or four videos on disability, how to get it, uh, what happens when you get it, uh, working, and, um, you know, so, Continuing disability reviews and all that good stuff. So, 
So yeah, and and the, the notebook is uh, tell her um, to write down everything. You know, I talked to a Social Security employee on this day, and I told them I'm going to work on this day because if Social Security ever messes anything up, you've got she's got documentation right there and says, hey, I told you. And then uh, so provisional income, only earned income items, sir, that would be included in provisional income. Our military retirement says. So let's see, provisional income. So unearned income is basically. Um, so I guess you're asking about um, the uh, um, uh, retirement or disability or anything else. Yeah, so it, it, all of that doesn't affect uh, Social Security in terms of work for retirement or disability um, because you're not actually, you know, you did work to get that annuity and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, it's not actually work. So you are good. Uh, I was in the civil service employee as a police officer in LA back in before. So I take this without 55. Is it possible to get on Medicare as a result? Yeah, if uh, um, I think LA, they, um, some of them don't, I think you, LA doesn't pay into Social Security, but they do Medicare. So you should be get Medicare. Uh, Medicare starts after. Uh, being on disability for two years. So, uh, yeah, um, absolutely. And then, you know, there's a lot of gaps in Medicare. Um, you know, the big one is Part B, the 20% coinsurance. So if you got a bill for $100,000, then you have to pony up, you know, $20,000. So a lot of people get uh, some type of supplements to wrap around their Medicare Advantage or what I would recommend if you have the money as a Medicare supplement and they needed the Part D plan and the prescription drug plan and all that kind of good stuff. So um, you can give my Medicare team a call at 888-817-0446. And uh, if uh, they don't pick up, just leave a message and somebody will call you up and go over all your options. Um, but you first you'll need to you know, get set up with Medicare Part A and Part B. So call Social Security. Were you in World War II? <laughs> nice, Tensei. Tensei. Is that Tensei? I mean, genius in Japanese? Yeah, I was not in World War II. That's nice. Um, I read that the switch over to spouse Social Security is ending if a person was not born, if they case or did understand the issue. There is, yeah, so you're probably, that's, um, you're probably thinking of the old um, um, file and suspend thing that uh, is a trick people used to use is um, the, the, the worker would file and then the spouse would start benefits and then the worker would suspend so they can get the delayed retirement credits and then yeah so that was kind of a trick that uh, the Congress got rid of so uh, Ellie is in Louisiana. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Louisiana. All right. Yes. So, so you're good. So you definitely did pay into Social Security. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you're on uh, disability after 24 months, um, call Social Security. Um, I, well, if you're actually on Social Security disability, um, the uh, Medicare is sent to you automatically in, in uh, 24 months. So make sure you're, you know, if, if you've been on disability for, you know, close to two years, you should have your Medicare card in hand soon. Um, uh, 2033, can the Congress reduce retirees monthly benefit already draw on retirement now? Um, yeah, you know, Congress can do all kinds of stupid things, <laughs> as we know, um, you know, um, but, you know, Social Security has been kind of a pay-as-you-go system since 1935. Um, in the you know 80s and stuff they built up this big trust fund because you know the baby boomers were going to hit you know 76 million americans from what 1946 to 1964 and for you that just made the comment if i was in world war ii i was born in 1964 at the very end of the baby boomers um so uh yeah no i don't think they're going to grandfather anything in there because people are you know depending and and you know on how much they're going to receive so, but something definitely needs to be done, but I don't think it's going to be, you know, too draconian. Um, late to the event, your thoughts on using VA medical care over Medicare. Does VA disability income cancel my Social Security? Uh, VA, uh, second question first, uh, VA disability income? Nope, not at all. Uh, completely separate beasts. Um, and 
even, you know, disability people, you know, uh, I had a lot of veterans that I hired in my office. I'm a Marine Corps Sergeant veteran myself, um, and but a lot of people in my office that I hired were uh, disabled vets, and but they did not qualify for Social Security benefits because Social Security defines disability as the inability to work, and they were working. So one disability does not necessarily mean another disability. Uh, first question. Um, um, yeah, VA medical care. Um, that's a, it's a hit and miss. Uh, depends what part of the country you're at. Uh, you know, your, your issues, conditions. Um, so some people love it, but some people also go ahead and get a, you know, Medicare. Um, there are, you know, you get the Part A, Part B, you know, the Part B, it cost you, you know, 170 plus. Um, but some people, there, there are uh, Medicare Advantage plans, Patriot plans that'll pay for some of that. Um, and then you get all the extra benefits and you can see people outside of the Veterans Administration so give my Medicare, t call, uh, Medicare team a call at 888-817-0446. It's on, uh, the, on most of the videos in the description. Give them a call and they'll check out what's available in your area and give you all, all your options. All right, Chuck, I know a man that draws uh, Social Security disability insurance, works part-time, has for years, he hasn't, he, but he doesn't go over the monthly amounts. How can, how long can one work part-time without, ever, forever, forever and ever, ever, ever. Yep, as long as, uh, yeah, as long as you don't go over that amount, you know, continuously, you have the trial work period and extended period of eligibility, yeah. But, uh, yeah, Social Security realizes that, uh, you know, Social Security alone is, it's tough. Um, so yeah, they allow you work. Uh, one thing I do recommend is, you know, there's a limit. So let's say it's about 1500. Um, but let's say the limit is 1500. Anything over that, they, you know, it's kind of a red flag. You're, you know, it looks like you're working. It's called substantial gainful activity. Um, some people go right up to the limit because they want that extra hundred dollars or $200 working. And, uh, but that sets up a red flag where the Social Security people say, this person, you know, the limit is 1500 and they they work, you know, $1,499. So it's obviously, you know, you know, they could probably work more, but they know what the limit is. And so that kind of, you know, sends up a red flag. So I would recommend staying under that, you know, $100, $200 under that just to be on the safe side. All right. Uh, you mentioned private pensions does not count towards limit towards Bernie's limit. Does it withdraw from? Nope. Nope. What is the amount a person can work now before going over the state of mind? I was told. Yeah, it's up, uh, what, 22320 dollars just went up. It goes up, uh, yep, goes up a little bit every year. All right. Let's see, live in the Philippines and couldn't use Part B unless I was visiting the U.S. Should I get it anyway? Can I get it in the future? Um, yeah, that's, uh, I'm, I'm going to do an expat video because there's so many people moving overseas. Um, so um, if, you're, if your intention is to, you know, best laid plans of mice and men, um, but if you are really going to stay overseas for the rest of your life and you're good with the health care over there and you're never come back to the United States and you're never going to get sick and all that kind of good stuff, then you don't necessarily need Part A and Part B or anything like that. But if on the unfortunate chance you do get sick and you need, you have to come back to the United States, if you don't have it, then if you want to sign up for it, number one, you can't sign up for it until... January, February, March, and then won't start for a month later. So if you become, you know, ill in July, you know, you're going to be without health insurance for six or seven months. And you'll be penalized 10% for the rest of your life. Um, you know, uh, for every 12 month period, you did not have health insurance. So there's that. I'm applying for disability. It's been 14 months. My wife is retired. If I get approved, I get back pay for one year. Can my wife apply? apply under my name now that if I get approval, will she get back pay? Okay, um, yeah, your wife won't be able to get anything unless she is what's called an auxiliary child in care. If you have a child under the age of 16 or one that became disabled, she won't be able to receive any spouse benefits on, on, uh, on yours. Uh, and, well, let's see, I mean, she can, retirement type, 
thing, but if, uh, yeah, if she's 62, um, then, you know, check that out. But, uh, yeah, there are no, there's uh, um, child benefits when you receive disability. So if you have children, they will be able to receive payments going back to whenever you are approved, absolutely. And if you're, like I said, if your wife is taking care of those children, then yeah. All right. Let's see here. I think that's pretty much all of the questions. So I just wanted to, uh, all right. And I uh, want to do a quick little live here. Uh, make sure you all subscribe to the channel and I'll keep doing lives on a regular basis and uh, answering all your questions. So please share and take care of each other. Y'all have an awesome day. Bye-bye.